It's, and it, it was, was that. It was so good. It was, and it was me, just me and Tom the whole time. Tom would write a, the idea. He'd give it to me. I'd do it. Were you guys just buddies before yeah. you were in comedy? Yeah, yeah. Did you know each other before you were both in comedy? No, no. I met him. We were both working with uh, another comic, uh, Jay Moore. And, I know uh, Jay. Yeah, and Jay walked in, and Tom was in the green room at the Bray Improv, and Florida State was on the uh, TV, and Jay didn't know Tom. And I didn't know Tom. And we walked in, and I was like, hey, you're watching Florida State? And he was like, I grew up in Florida. I go, I grew up in Florida. He goes, Florida State's my team. I said, that's my team. And he went, yeah. And he said, I have $100 on this. And Jay walked in, and he goes, you have $100 on a game, and you're a host? And Jay goes, yeah. And he goes, you're a fucking moron, and walked out. And I go, hey, welcome to the tour. <laughs> <laughs> and then just that, that camaraderie of that ball busting between me, him, and Jay at the time, Tom and I got really, really close. And, uh, and, then, and then, you know, and then, yeah, we're like, yeah. So you were both Florida State, not the University of Florida. That's the uh, Florida, rival. Yeah, rival. that's the rival, yeah. I went to Florida State. Tom didn't go to Florida State. He went to some small college in North Carolina. Who are the Gators? That's University of Florida. Right. Did you do Greater Growl? I did the Gator Growl. I think I was at that. Were you? I think I was. Why would you be at that? that because be... you still went to those. Like, especially, I think you did it in like 80. I did it like in, in the early, maybe 90. Maybe 90? Yeah, but but uh, it was the biggest audience I've ever played. It was, uh, you know, 80,000 80, people, people. people in the stadium. And it was tradition to have a comic every year do it. Did you ever, well, you wouldn't do it, right? So I think I did, this sounds crazy, but I think I might have done Pow Wow. I did I did powwow, which is I, I did that too. But that was indoor, indoor. Yeah, that was indoor. It's it's a less it's less, it's like ten thousand. Inside an arena. Inside an arena. So I did powwow this year. I think I did powwow. I'm not certain if I did or not, but I performed at homecoming at Florida State, but I don't think it was set up as powwow. But I saw Bobcat Goldthwaite do powwow. I saw Adam Sandler do powwow. And 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 I, I want to say I saw you because we you would go. We would saw go. Me, you probably saw me at Pow Wow. I probably saw you at Pow Wow. Yeah. But we would go down to Gator Growl because they had big comics come on. Right. I want to say like uh, Carrot Top did it. Yep. Um, Cosby. Really? It was 80,000. It was such. Now I look back and I go. It's crazy. I, I mean, I, I can't imagine. I, that, How do you do that? How do you perform in front of 80,000 people? That That's um it was it wasn't fun but it's great to say that you did it yeah you know it's not really fun because and also it's really hard to to work the crowd <laughs> uh, you <laughs> you and rose c <laughs> i watched i watched uh i watched bobcat try to work the crowd and and they just started yelling play free bird <laughs> <laughs> yeah when did the th whole thing with you with no shirt start uh it started I guess maybe like maybe 10, 15, 12 years maybe ago. I don't know really. I, what happened? But that's was, your signature. What happened was I would get on the road and I would, Thursday would be a bummer of a show for me. Because I would think Thursday night, you got a whole weekend ahead of you. you and, and especially if your numbers were low, you'd be like, oh, this is going to be a long week. And I would find that if I didn't do something to change my personality about that i would all i would almost bring that energy with me on stage so i started ripping my shirt off and killing a beer on thursday ripping my shirt off, and then i throw it back on and then i just started ripping my shirt off on every show when i got on stage i rip it off kill a beer and it made me giggle i'd play uh ram jam black betty yeah and it would make me giggle and i'd go this is uh this is this is what it should be and then one night i was at the i was at the columbus funny bone and i ripped my shirt off i killed a beer and um <laughs> and I forgot to put it back on, and I just got in something interactive, and someone in the back, I went, oh, I haven't, I haven't put my shirt on. I went to put it on, and there's this woman in the back. She goes, keep it off. And so I kept it off. Sexy. I got off stage, and someone I really respected, a comedian I really respected, said to me, that's really impressive. You just did an hour with no shirt. He's like, imagine how those jokes would work if you had a shirt on. Like, that was distracting. And then I said, oh, what I'll do, because I'd heard that George Carlin before a special would grow a beard, because it was harder to be funnier with a beard than it, right before the show, especially shave it off. Because and then it was all of a sudden it was like swimming in in like in like uh, overalls, you know? Right. And so I was like, what I'll do is I'll do stand up on the road with my shirt off, and then when I go to a special and I put on a suit or a collared shirt, I'm gonna be a monster because I've been doing it shirtless all this time. And then I went to go do my Showtime special and I realized, oh, I'm not really comfortable in a shirt. Like I've, been, <laughs> I've been doing I, it's I, like I, a sweatpants yeah, game. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm really uncomfortable in a shirt and. Showtime told me they were like, "Hey, I, I just giving you a heads up. I, we're doing two shows. You should do one in a shirt because I think that you're gonna want to do one in a shirt. You're giving people a reason to change the channel. Like, 
When you rip your shirt off, there's a big swath of Americans that's going to be like, oh, that's not what I'm interested in. And they're going to change the channel. Everybody loves tits. And it doesn't matter <laughs> whose well, they are. I wish you could tell that to those people at Showtime that year because I had the lowest rated special they had ever done. No one watched it. It was, it was like they give you a list of all their specials. And right. it was at the bottom. But then I, what happened is I, I, I took that machine clip. I took a bunch of clips from that special and I posted them on Facebook. And the machine story went viral. And because I was shirtless, all of a sudden that was like a marketing thing. Right. And so like I remember very shortly after that I was at the airport, uh, the American Airlines Admirals Club, and a woman sat down next to me and she goes, "Hey, hey, don't, I know you." And I was like, "I don't think you do." She's like, "Where did you grow up? Where, I went to high school with you, right?" And I was like, "I went to an all boys Catholic high school." She was like, no, I know I know you. How do I know you? The bartender's watching this. Then she just goes, oh, I didn't recognize you with your shirt on. And the bartender lit up like, what? She's like, you're Bert. And I was like, yes, I am. She goes, oh, my God, I love you. I, I And I was like, oh, yeah. And now it's like, I remember when it started really popping and like I did my, I did my, hey, big boy, no, secret time with my shirt off. And it did really well. And Segura called me laughing hysterically. And he was like, you are going to have to be shirtless until you're fucking 70. We're gonna do something at the Mark Twain Awards and you're gonna be fucking 70 years old and you're gonna go, hey guys, and rip your shirt off at 70. He goes, you gotta be shirtless for the rest of your fucking life. <laughs>